welcome back to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. I'm Allison Donnelly, and today is Monday, April 29th. Hi, Allison. Rob Turnside here at Thurman TV Land, and we're just about done with April. Yeah, just about. It flew by. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy too. I'm ready for May. Because it's been kind of topsy-turvy, up and down, you know, cold. We had a frost almost last night. I had to cover my, all my it tomato get, plants up. It did get chilly, and it was chilly this morning too. Yeah, so... We're ready, and uh, if folks out there are gardeners, they can get some really good stuff coming up this weekend, right? Yeah, at the St. Marianne's Garden Market, and we'll have Don Rodenbaugh and Michael Brown from St. Marianne's to talk, tell us all about it this evening. So that'll be, that'll be awesome. great. Cinco de Mayo's coming. Cinco de Mayo, and then we have Mother's Day the following Sunday. And I don't know if I should leak this or not, but rumor has it that Del Lord is going to come on the show next week with this musical compadre, Vaughn Smith, and sing some good old-fashioned mom songs. Yeah. yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, for those of our viewers who haven't maybe seen Del Lord, he's our old-timey musician who comes on about, I don't know, once every couple months. Yeah. And he's great. Where will we be with that mom? I, nowhere. We would not be. That's a good point. <laughs> so you've been doing some investigative journalism. Well... I hate to open up a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, I hate that too. <laughs> They're in there. But I want to talk about Wormgate. Okay, tell me. Just just give us a synopsis because I know it's, we're going to be digging you know, into this later on. We're having uh, Kevin Hornberger on the show. Yep. A lot of political scandals, but this kind of goes <laughs> deeper than right. politics. Not that Kevin's involved in any scandals. No, no, no. no, no. Not, not insinuating He would be the one ferreting all. them out. Yes. And... This Wormgate thing, it bears looking into and digging deep. Mm. And I, I, I feel like you're trying to get at a worm pun, but not quite getting there. I, I, I'm just not thinking of it. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit more about it next week. I'll yes. do some, some, some snooping around investigative journalism. Okay. Okay. And just for the, so at, as you mentioned, we've got um, Don Rodenbaugh and Michael Brown from St. Mary Ann's to talk about the garden market. We've also got Delegate Kevin Hornberger to talk about legislative session. And we've got a rapper, Eric Copper, and he goes by the stage name Copperhead. Whoa. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> All right. And now for the news. Maryland Comptroller Peter Francho will head to Elkton tomorrow to present the William Donald Schaefer Helping People Award for Cecil County to Missy Reynolds, founder of Cruisin' for a Cause. Started in 2012 in memory of Reynolds' father, Robert, a lifelong automobile enthusiast who died of leukemia, the annual vintage car show raises funds for Union Hospital cancer patients struggling to pay their medical bills. Missy Reynolds also is a five-time cancer survivor and dedicated volunteer at Union Hospital. The event will take place at Union Hospital at 1.30 p.m. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources is increasing its efforts to educate the public about the northern snakehead, an invasive fish found throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Northern snakeheads were first observed in Maryland waters in 2002, and the species gained a foothold in tidal waters. Since then, it has spread to every major tributary of the Chesapeake Bay, including waters around Cecil County. The department relies heavily on conservation-minded anglers armed with correct information to help address the problem. To separate fact from fiction about this fish, the department has introduced several informational videos, supplemental fact sheets, and an updated webpage. The videos provide general information on snakeheads, regulations, and advice from an expert angler on how to target the snakehead. Links to the videos along with additional information can be found on the department's website. If you couldn't choose among the multitude of events to take part in last weekend, you'll be faced with even greater choices this weekend. There are ribbon cuttings, 5Ks, visitor center openings, even a boat show, and last but not least, the garden market at St. Mary Ann's in Northeast. If you want to know about these events and other events around the county, visit the county calendar on the Cecil County website, ccgov.org. We'll be back after these messages. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? 
Good evening, and welcome back to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. Earlier this month, the 439th legislative session of the Maryland General Assembly ended. So here to talk about it is our delegate, Kevin Hornberger. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So 2019 was a busy year for the Maryland General Assembly. Very um, much so, yep. Among bills that passed were Fight for 15, the Prescription Drug Affordability Board, the ban mm. on foam cups and containers, and of course we had the passing of the longest serving uh, Speaker of the House, Michael Bush. That's correct. What is your take on how session went this year? It was a, uh, it was a very tumultuous session, and uh, the passing of the Speaker, no one really expected that. Mm -hmm. and it happened right before Sine Die, so that just added a whole other layer of challenge. Right. And everyone was grieving and at the same time trying to get work done. I will say that some of the initiatives that, that did pass, uh, we, we resisted, one of which being the styrofoam ban, of course. Mm -hmm and the fight for 15. However, we were able to get many amendments on that to sort of water it down and delay the implementation. Okay. So there were some successes buried in those sort of uh, initiatives that came from Central Maryland. Yep. What areas do you feel you made progress in this year? I, um, I think that we were able to get, amongst all that chaos, we were able to get a lot done for Cecil County. Mm -hmm. As you know, we have a really strong delegation and uh, we had four bills that the county had requested and we were able to get all those passed unanimously out of both houses. And what were those? So just a quick rundown, uh, we had our first bill was about expanding broadband. Mm -hmm. So it created new taxing districts right. and built upon existing code. And this is gonna help push out 5G to some of these more rural areas. Mm -hmm. It allows people to opt in and create their own district. The county can front load the money and then they can, the ratepayers can pay that back over time right. to spread out some of those costs. Mm -hmm. Another bill that I'm extremely proud about is our Sunday hunting bill. And um, before this bill was passed, Cecil County had one of the most restrictive uh, Sunday hunting in the state. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. So uh, with the work of the efforts of the uh, delegation as well as the county council, we passed, we now have the most expansive Sunday hunting rights in the state. So what, what changed? So this will add every Sunday that uh, is in a week that's during deer season. Okay. Or turkey season, which includes spring and fall, mm -hmm. uh, you can now hunt on Sundays. Okay. On both public and private property, so that's huge. Uh, it also reduced the uh, the distance away from a building that an archer can shoot okay. and hunt deer, uh, which is which is a real game changer because we have deer now that are getting closer and closer to houses and rural areas, and this will be a, another tool that someone can use to go hunting. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the uh, other bills are concerned. We also had some local successes uh, with personal bills. So we had three personal bills that passed as well. Mm -hmm. And I can go over those real quickly. One was a subtraction modification right. uh, for the, our MD, MDTA police officers. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the viewers at home are familiar, if you've ever gone across the 40 or 95 bridge, MTA oversees those from right. law enforcement. So as long as they reside in Cecil County, they can now get a subtraction modification on their taxes. Right, so that brings them in line with other, other law enforcement yes, officers in the county. And, that's correct. And what does that mean exactly for them? So that means that they can reduce their taxable income mm -hmm. uh, so they can get more money back on their taxes from the state. Okay. So that's, that's a real big, and that's going to incentivize officers to locate here right. locally. Uh, the next bill has to do with uh, who can run a medical director facility. Right. So as you know, Cecil County, we're having huge issues with the substance abuse. Right. Our overdose rates continue to rise, mm -hmm. and even though our deaths are going down, our overdoses are still going up because of the use of Narcan. Mm -hmm. And uh, what this bill does is it allows a regional medical director, uh, before it had to be someone who was a licensed psychiatric doctor. Right. Okay. We've lowered that threshold to include psychiatric nurses, right. which are just as qualified and in many cases can do a better job and there are more of them available. So that's gonna pave the way so that we can open more of these mental health facilities. So. Right, and makes sense because nurse practitioners can do a lot of what doctors mm -hmm. do yeah. anyway. They can also prescribe meds, mm -hmm. they can oversee the facility. So that those are all, those are all really big things for Cecil County and I'm, I'm very excited that they passed. Right. Um, one of the other bills, uh, you know, we could talk about Fair Hill a little bit, that's pretty yes. exciting. Yeah, we should. Yes, so Fair Hill, as you know, we're looking at starting a four and then eventually a five star event yes. there. And this is going to be probably one of the biggest things that ever happens in CISO. I think last time I was on the show, I actually spoke about it. Yeah, you did. And uh, very passionate about this. Uh, we're gonna have our, our race, annual race coming up in May, May 25th, mm -hmm. that we have every year. And after that race is completed, 
we already have contracts in hand and funding in place so that they can go right to work redoing all the turf and irrigation for the main race field. Great. Yeah, so that should be done hopefully by the following year. And then 2020, 2021, we'll start having the four and five star events. Cool. Wow. Things are really moving along. Yes. It seemed when, when that stuff was first approved, it seemed like it would be so long. But mm -hmm. No, we're fast tracking it. Uh, Governor Larry Hogan absolutely loves this idea and mm -hmm. loves Cecil County. And he put a tremendous amount of funding in there to improve the stables, the grounds, all the, all the engineering drawings, uh, the turf field, et cetera, and, and this year's budget. And I'm glad to report that it all passed. Right. That's exciting stuff. So, yeah, a lot, a lot happened in the Fair Hill area. We actually got uh, funding as well for the Beehive. Right, yeah, so that's restoration, continued mm -hmm. restoration. So yeah. I'm sure you'll be involved with those things throughout the year. What, what else will you be working on? So during the interim, we're having uh, a lot of meetings with different stakeholders and businesses mm -hmm. uh, to try to come up with legislation for next session. One of the uh, bills that I worked on that didn't pass, but we're looking good for next year, uh, deals with restructuring how electricians get licensed. Right. So Maryland is one of the only states on the Eastern Seaboard that doesn't have a journeyman's license statewide mm -hmm. or an apprentice. So uh, my background is trades and always working for the trades people. So we'll hope to establish this uh, next year. And uh, we've got bipartisan support on this effort. So that's one of the, one of the things we'll be working on. Uh, also uh, coming up on Wednesday, two days from now, mm -hmm. the session's not technically over. We will reconvene and elect a new speaker to replace Michael Bush. Right, so what can we expect from that, do you think? I, um, I think that this will be a very historic moment in the General Assembly. Uh, this will be the first time where we have someone who, the, the chances of winning it are not going to be a white male. We have African American um, man and then we have a, a lesbian female mm -hmm. who are both running for speaker. And unlike years past, the Republican caucus is actually going to be a, a player in this race. Mm -hmm. We voted as a block to dedicate all of our votes, all 42, to either one of these candidates. Okay. So we could be the deciding factor, and there's a good uh, potential that you could see a coalition government form in the House of Delegates. So extremely exciting. Right. Yep. Well, stay tuned, and we'll know uh, close of business on Wednesday. Right. Well, what do you think, what impacts do you think the election of the new speaker would have in 20 priorities for 2020? I think that you'll continue to see uh, similar priorities put forth by both Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. This was one of the first years that both sides actually announced beforehand what their initiatives were. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't as successful, but we are in the deep minority, so that's understandable. However, we were, we were able to get many amendments put on and actually impact bills when they went to the Senate uh, to get them more closely aligned with our constituency. So I think that you'll see uh, a continuation of that. And I think that depending on how the speaker race turns out, it could be uh, very good for all of Maryland, or if it goes the other way, it could be better for more of the centralized locations, which would be unfortunate, but we'll continue to fight just the same. Okay. Yeah. Do we miss anything? Oh, we miss so much, but I can't remember it all. And <laughs> well, I want we'll the, have to have you back. Exactly. I want the viewers to have something for next time. So <laughs> thanks again for having me. Delegate Kevin Hohenberger, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thanks. And now 30 at 6, Cecil County in the world. Spring is finally here. It says so on the St. Mary Ann's Garden Mart brochure that I have in front of me. And I, we have in the studio tonight, Dawn and Mike are going to tell us all about the St. Mary Ann's Garden Market. Now, Mike, you're the chair. Yes, I am. Of this, this is the 22nd year. This is the 22nd year. Back in 1998, St. Marianne's Episcopal Church in Northeast decided to find a way to thank our neighbors for supporting the church and supporting the works of the church in, in the community. So they decided to have a garden-themed um, community event. Um, 22 years later, we're still going strong. We had over 4,000 people come through last year. Wow. It's always the weekend before the weekend of Mother's Day, which means it's this Friday, May 3rd, and this Saturday, May 4th. Don't show up in two weeks. We won't be there. Now it's a golden opportunity to get a gift We'll be mom. there, but the garden market won't be there. <laughs> Right? Get a gift for mom. That's a great yes. opportunity. Yes. It's a wonderful opportunity. We actually even have some kid activities where they get to plant a marigold, paint the pot, and essentially create something that they can give to their mom. 
those act, that activity is free. So there's a lot of stuff that kids can do with the garden market. And just how many vendors are there doing? A lot, right? There's like 45 vendors this year, Rob. Um, plus, we have a number of nonprofits. We have a number of church-based activities, like the ones Michael mentioned. We have duck races. Uh, the ladies of the church sell plants. Um, we have a bake table. We have a number of really nice activities, um, and it is based around the plants of the garden. But And we try to keep it true to that and some local craftsmen, that sort of thing. But we also have other outdoor products like natural foods. Um, we have some honey. We have uh, people that make birdhouses and things like that for the yard, yard decorations. Um, we have natural cheeses, produce, soaps, um, natural skin care made out of beeswax, honey, that sort of thing. So it's really a nice event we got going there. That sounds like a lot of great Mother's Day shopping that can happen this weekend, rain or shine, correct? Right, rain or shine. Um, we also have a number of really nice musical acts. We have Box Turtle Bob coming. We have the Northeast and Northeast Middle and High School Orchestras coming. Del Lord will be there playing. Uh, so it'll be it's always a very nice event. We have a number of food vendors. It's a good way to spend the day, kind of really kick off spring. I, I myself have been going there for a number of years, and now I am a member of the church and, you know, head, heading up the market. So, so it's a really thrilled to be doing church it. Too. It is a beautiful historic church, and we'll be doing tours of the church. Uh, it's a, just a good opportunity to see the beautiful grounds right on the Northeast River. One thing. I know, I know you raise money for the church, but if it's for the work of the church, is that correct? It is for the work of the church. So one of the things, for instance, that St. Marion's does is we have um, our outreach food bank is really one of the largest food banks in, in Cecil County. Um, so we feed close to 1,000 people a week out of that, that outreach uh, food bank. So a lot of the money goes to the outreach there are a number of other missions that we have in the community. We have a, a, a partnership with uh, one of the schools where we actually supply sneakers for kids so that they can attend gym class. So some of these kids in Cecil County are pretty poor and their shoes are pretty worn out so they can't participate in gym. So I think we've probably given what, 300 pairs of shoes in the yeah, last, wow, right. last couple of months. Um, we have Angel Tree, um, at Christmas time. At Christmas time, benefiting kids whose parents can't afford to get them a nice Christmas. Um, we have a really good recovery network for people that are in recovery. We do a monthly service and we offer our space to a number of different community groups like that. So we try to support them any way we can. Um, and we do a number of mission type pro projects. Um, this year, one of the things that we're going to be doing around the church grounds with some of the monies that we receive from this will be to uh, replace and repair some of the shutters and windows on the church. The church is over 300 years old, so there's a bit of maintenance that needs to be done to keep it up, um, keep, it, keep it nice. Uh, so that's something that everybody can kind of see you know, that we're... For sure. Yeah, it's the yeah. oldest building in Northeast and one of the oldest buildings in Cecil County, so. Wow, wow. And it's gonna be a great weekend. Statistically, first weekend in May is the best weather for the whole year. It is the best weather, but you know what? Gardeners don't care. And many of our vendors in past years said that their best years are the years when it rains. So, you know, Go figure. So rain or shine, we're going to be there. Um, our right. visitors are going to be there, and uh, it's going to be a great time. I have a lot of stuff planted, but there's always room for more. I personally try to get my plants in for Mother's Day, so to me it's an ideal time to, to buy plants and to get things and just really get in the spirit of, you know, being outdoors. Yes, always sounds like there's going to be some unique stuff there. 
Did we miss anything to tell the, our viewers about St. Mary Ann's Garden Mart this weekend? The one thing that we'd like to do is we'd like to thank our, some of our sponsors. Sponsorship really makes it possible to, to hold this event because it's pretty expensive for us to do it. Um, we'd like to thank Crouch Funeral Home. They've been a longtime supporter of the garden market. Um, Alan Myers Company um, has been a big supporter this year. Um, Qual Security out of Elkton is going to be donating their security services. And Pro Flooring Incorporated out of Northeast has again, again been a big supporter this year. So we'd really like to thank them. There are too many other sponsors to, to, to name. You'll see um, sponsor thank you banners throughout the market and you'll see them in our gate brochure. So yeah. please, if you, if you have services or products that these guys sell, please support them and tell them thank you for supporting them the garden market. Great. And I'm going to get me some Kilby cream ice cream today. Yes, the oh, Moon yeah. Mobile will be at the market. We also have a number of really good food vendors. There's just something for everyone, so please come out. It's a really great event if you haven't been. And if you have been, we hope you come out again. It's really great. I'll be there. So will we. <laughs> Thank we you will. And now Cecil County in the world. Let's welcome Eric Copper. Thanks. Great to be here. Rapper, singer, songwriter. Yeah. Renaissance man. Oh, yeah. YouTube channeler, right? Yes, yes. My YouTube channel actually has uh, quite a few subscribers, 23,000 or close to 24,000 at the moment. So. Wow. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fun to get videos out there and music for the world to hear. So. And you're, you're going to perform for us tonight. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, all your many aspects of your art, mm -hmm. what do you want to talk about first? Well, I recently released an album. Um, on, it's, it's on all the digital distribution platforms. You can see it on Spotify, uh, Tidal, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, on, on everything basically you can think of. It's called Self Portrait, and it's about, um, it's about me and my struggles throughout life with uh, my mental illness. Because as, at eight years old, I was diagnosed with autism. And um, it's it's been a huge part of my life. Just any 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 development I've been through is centered around that. And um, I've had a lot of support through family and friends in my life. And this album, it's ten tracks, basically deals with me at different points in my life, and and what I went through and just how I coped with it, and just talking about it. It's just I want to uh, the message I want to get across is that your label or your your illness doesn't have to define you. You can be whatever you want to be. And, and you just have to have the drive and will to want to be different. Right, right. And uh, it sounds like you've driven yourself to a good spot. Yeah. Are you, uh, I think we saw you, Cecil TV mm -hmm. captured you. Yes. At uh, Cecil College's yes. open mic. Yes, that was actually a song I wrote called Monster in a Bottle. My friend Joe Sharp actually sang the, the hook portion of that. Um, it was a bit of a fictitious song. I'm not a big drinker, but <laughs> it was uh, it was it was a good message. I think uh, that anybody anybody deserves a second chance, no matter what they've done. So right, right. So Eric, you we were talking earlier. You don't play a bona fide instrument right. like guitar or anything, but you write these songs. How right. do they come to you? It depends. Like sometimes I'll get an idea for a song in my head, and then I'll search for um, the right sound. And then I'll, um, usually producers online, they post uh, beats up for, for you to purchase leases to. And if I, find the right, if I find the right beat and the right sound, I'll purchase a lease to it and then contact the artist that made it and we'll work together with it. And um, otherwise, you know, sometimes I, I, I do parodies. Like I, I take an original, uh, original song that's popular at the time and I make a, a funny version of it. Like if, if, if you know Weird Al, Sure. Yeah, Weird Al. Weird Al's a big inspiration of mine when it comes to that department. So I just try to, you know, make make humorous songs. And when it's not that, it's it's the rapping that I do. Okay, Copperhead. Copperhead. Did, Copperhead you, is my artist name. Yes. How did you get that name? Did you get it yourself, or somebody call you that? Or it was. It originally wasn't my rap name. Actually, I went by. I I just thought of a name um, in in high school, and I called myself Ajax, and that didn't pan out well because everybody kept going, "You mean like the dish soap?" And I was like, "No, mm -mm, not like the dish soap, like the Greek hero." But then I just got tired of that question, and I I, I thought about because I really respect my father, and my father works in um, a warehouse in Northeast. And uh, at work, his nickname is Copperhead. 
And I, I looked at my last name and just thought of something that would be punchy. And, and I figured settled on Copperhead because it sounds very cool. And it's got an emotional connection to me because I really respect my father. So Cool. Got a little bite to it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Like I like the snake. <laughs> like like your song. Yeah. And uh, what are you going to be uh, rapping for us? Tonight? Well, tonight I brought two songs. Um, one song is actually the title track for my album, so it's going to be called Self Portrait, and that's kind of like I I, I made it the title track because it kind of neatly wraps up um, in three verses everything that the album is trying to convey. And then the next song after that will be. Um, something I wrote about my grandmother who passed away. And um, towards the end of her life, she was struggling with uh, worsening dementia and she had multiple sclerosis. And um, I wrote a song from her perspective because uh, a few of the things she said towards the end of her life really stuck with me. And um, I just decided to write a song to pay tribute to her. So that's gonna be from her perspective. It's called Die With Dignity. Well, you know what? That's, that's good for Mother's Day coming mm -hmm. um, You're performing where next? Um, I usually perform at the open mic at uh, Elkton Station, Central College. It's the second Friday of every month. Right. But um, yeah, generally I try to get on stage wherever I can. You can you can find me online. Uh, like I said, my YouTube channel is Eric Copper, uh, E R I K C O P P E R, and uh, you can look up my artist's profile on like Spotify and everything. You can just search up Copperhead. Cool. I'm sure our viewers are going to do that, and we're going to hear it tonight. Yep. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. Invites to slay page after page, building rage upon rage. If all the world's a stage, he plays his part, trapped inside a cage. For him, loneliness is normal, total social isolation. He's shunned by everyone, the local show, no violation. His aspirations and dreams are often ripped at the seams. His inspirations are deemed too dangerous to believe. All he wants to achieve is a level of recognition. But all he's been so far is beaten down to the lowest position. He's not retarded, but thus far he's disregarded Discarded like a piece of trash and left to fight for scraps Look at my life from the outside in There isn't much I can take pride in I tend to give more than I get This is a self-portrait but wait, inside the darkened room, a light begins to glow. Illuminate the space and ate the first, and then you know. He found a way to weave his words into a worthy written. He set aside his suicidal sights and searched for symptoms to tell them what was wrong with him and what he had to fix. His skin was made of glass, and the world was hurling bricks. But what he did was realize he doesn't need their love. All he needs is family and friends to rise above See the world will break him down That's just the way it seems to be The thing about dreams is that they don't adhere to reality So he took his hand off the pen And went over to the window And drew the curtains open And that glow began to grow Look at my life from the outside in I see a lot I can take pride in I tend to give back what I get This is a self-portrait the room's a little lighter, his life's a little brighter He writes about inspiring things, now he's a fighter No longer one to let the weight of the world drag him down No more the butt of the joke, no sad attempts to be the clown He's taking back his self-esteem and they should take this to mean Nothing they can hurl at him now Can even make him bleed He's stronger than he was before Crawling back up from the floor Longer list of things to live for Each day's an open door, you know You can do this too Take the pain inside of you And use it as fuel to do what you do Always shoot for the moon Pull yourself together Forget the battle scars Cause even if you miss the moon You'll land among the stars Look at my life from the outside in Everything I can take pride in I tend to get back what I give This is a self-portrait 